Hi everyone, Carolyn Kristen here with Luminous Ministries and today we'd like to do a little soul stirring and we'd like to begin by sharing with you what's been stirring our souls in the last couple of days. Six different <laughs> things. So Kristen, why don't you begin? Sure, absolutely. Okay, I'll start with number one. I shared this in a story recently on our Instagram and Facebook but it's called The Loop and it's put out by Catholic Vote. It's an email that you can sign up for and it comes to you daily and it's all of like the main current events right. that are happening in our world from the Catholic perspective. It's very concise and it's, you know, forming your conscience right. and it is just phenomenal. I've been loving it and also it has calls to action, you know, and it tells yes. you exactly how to do it in a very easy way to make a profound difference and to, you know, spread our beautiful belief with the world. So I've just really been enjoying that. So that's my number one. How about you, Mom? Number two. That's a two. good one. And I think it also guides your prayer life because I was, sure. I was on there yesterday and I was just like, okay, this is telling me exactly what I need to be praying about and mm -hmm. who I need to be praying for. Oh, so absolutely. That was yeah, really yeah. good. So what's been stirring my soul is so I belong to a faith sharing group and I've actually been in a faith sharing group for over 30 years. And it's a, you know, a small group that meets together once a week. And we've been doing this via Zoom. But the group that I'm with now has been, we've been together for 20 years. I mean, it's the amazing. membership has kind of changed. People have been, you know, come in and gone out and people have moved and different things. But, you know, we get together and right now we are, are doing the book, Searching for and Maintaining Peace by Father Jacques Philippe. And he has, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but if you're not, you, you might want to check him out. He's very depthful and he has some really good things. Now, um, I wish the cover of this book were a little different because I don't think it's something that you'd go into a bookstore and go, oh, I love that cover. Cover. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that book. And even the title, Searching for and Maintaining Peace, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I personally think this book is so filled with treasure. And I just, you know, I just opened it a moment ago before we started this video. And I opened to, uh, what do you do when you're unable to abandon yourself? And basically the answer was, abandon yourself anyway. You know what? Abandon yourself anyway. Because total abandonment is really the only way to go through life, to just give everything to God, to just turn it all over to Him and allow Him to lead the way. So I'll just share with you uh, a moment that happened in our faith sharing group a couple of weeks ago. We were we began by praying, you know, the, the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, and we prayed that entire prayer because it was in the book and was recommended to us to read. Uh, so we did together on Zoom, and one of the one of the ladies in the group shared that she just likes to say to herself over and over again, kind of as a prayer mantra, only goodness and kindness follow me. And mm. she just repeats that over and over again, only goodness and kindness follow me. And that That's helps cool. to keep her from, you know, being, uh, from going under, you know, yeah. like it's so easy to do in, right. in this day and age and any day, in any day and age, yeah. but, uh, only goodness and kindness follow. I love that. I'm yeah. going to adopt that too. That's <laughs> great. That's what I said. I wrote it down right away. I'm like, I do not want to forget that yeah. because that was a beautiful sentiment. Yeah. yeah I love that. Good. So anyhow, he has lots of great books. Another one that I'm reading of his is called Real Mercy. And here's another great one called Time for God. But this particular author has a lot of really um, very deeply depthful spiritual books out there that you might want to delve into. Father Jacques Philippe, P-H-I-L-I-P-P-E. -P -P -E. There you go. Awesome. Okay, well, number three, <laughs> something that's been stirring my soul, is living Number hybrid. three. Oh, number three. Yeah, I was one, two, three. I thought you were on your third one. Sorry. No. <laughs> one, two, three. Three, she was right. <laughs> okay, so number three is Libby Library. Anybody heard of this? I think a lot of people have, but I had not. Um, and maybe if you haven't, definitely, if you've got a library card, all you have to do is download the app for Libby Library, and then you go to it, and you can get audiobooks or just regular yeah. you know, books yeah. right to your phone or your iPad or Kindle or whatever, whatever. And so I've started listening to a bunch of audiobooks because, you know, there's so much throughout our day that you can be listening to something. Right, I mean, I'm right. not a person who can work and listen, but I mean, like, if you're doing laundry or doing the dishes right. or, you know, like, those kinds of activities. And it's like, why put that time, you know, like, why not put it to good use? Right. And so I've been listening to C.S. Lewis's The Screw Tape Letters because I've always wanted to read it. And I've, like, known certain quotes from it and everything else, but I've never, like, really read it. Yeah. So it's I've been listening <laughs> to it on audiobook with Libby Library. 
great and I'm loving it. The other funny thing is though, I never read a book without like writing down the quotes that really mean something to me. Yeah. So I do have to pause it quite often and be like, okay, now I got to find that quote somewhere, copy, paste, put it in my notes, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. but I'm really enjoying it. So the, the, the great thing about the screw tape letters is it just presents how, how really present Satan is in our lives and and how sneaky and manipulative well, he is. Well, it's so... And the whole way the book is written yes. is kind of... Yeah, it's creative yes. and kind of ha-ha funny, but true. Oh, well, I was going to mm -hmm. say, just yeah, so spot on. Even yeah. one of the quotes that I did put in my phone was about, you know, your patriotism and how, you know, that could be aligned with your religion, but all of a sudden, you know, the, the devil was trying to persuade the cousin... You know, it's or it's a nephew. It's nephew. a it's an yeah. uncle writing to the nephew, and yeah. the uncle's trying to persuade the nephew to then keep that fervor going, so that right. all of a sudden that the person, the patient, as they call the person, forgets <laughs> about God yeah. and the faith aspect, and is only about patriotism. Right. And you know, so all these ways that the devil does work, and you're sitting there listening to it, and you're like, yes, like, or you know, the keep them distracted, right. you know, all of these tactics that you know are so spot on. So yeah, a great read, C.S. Lewis's Screwtape's Letters, yep. but if you want to do the audio book, um, get uh, plugged into Libby Library, it's been awesome. Libby Library, there we go, that's great. I was just thinking as you said that, that, um, you know, we talked, what were you just saying about, um, Distractions. Distractions. Yes, we did a face sharing. Our face sharing group did a book years and years ago about how distraction is Satan's greatest weapon. Mm -hmm. His, it his is. absolute greatest weapon. And the other know, one I think too is making you forget. Like mm -hmm. not only being distracted, but then forget. You have these really powerful encounters with God, and then you forget yeah. about them. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why journaling is so important. Yeah. Speaking of that, great segue. Oh, into perfect. I didn't even four. know. <laughs> so this is the journal that I'm carrying around in my bag. I'm a bag lady. And, and in fact, the other day I was sharing with a friend that I'm a bag within a bag lady. So I have my that bag. That is so true. So I have my bag. And then inside my bag are other bags. So I have a bag for my glasses. I have a bag for my mask. I have a bag for, you know my technology cords and it's all a bag within and a bag. And it is heavier than heavy. <laughs> also, you know what else is funny? I mean, most people who watch our videos are in, North, you know, this area in the Midwest, but you know what we just, you just said? And my friend made fun of me for this one time. She's from Virginia. We say bag. It's in my bag. <laughs> bag. She, she told me it was bag. Say bag. It bag. Okay, there we go. It's bag. <laughs> So I'm a bag lady. Nah, she's a bag within a bag. Yes, I'm a bag within a bag lady. So that's a little different than just a regular bag lady, just so you know. So in my bag, I pulled out my journal, and I carry this with me because I have lots of journals that are at home, but they're heavy and whatnot. So I always make sure that I have one journal that is with me that I can just pull out and jot something down. So I did the other day, um, I when I read a piece of scripture that is extremely meaningful to me, or I think, oh my gosh, I really need to meditate on that or focus on that uh, and contemplate that piece of scripture, I write it down. So the other day I wrote down 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and I've been really trying to focus on that piece of scripture because I'll read it to you right now and then I think you'll be able to figure out why. We probably all could stand to focus on this piece of scripture if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Mm. So I've just been really praying that because I feel that we need to have our many, many sins forgiven and we need our land to be healed. Mm -hmm. Oh, do we ever need our land to be healed? So I just keep praying that and yeah, I love you know that. I'm so glad that I had my um my journal in journal my, in her bag within bag, a bag within my bag yeah there you go <laughs> all <laughs> right my number, number four five is and here I'll give oh, you yours okay our monogram well they're not really monogram they are branded face masks and my aunt got these for us and they have just brought my me twin so sister yeah they have brought us so much joy just like mm -hmm. the love to give someone something so creative mm -hmm. and she had these made and they're just so neat and so that really really touched my soul and touched my heart and it's keeping us safe so it was kind of a win-win-win and done in the in the colors of our ministry because we are luminous <laughs> ministries and therefore we kind of gravitate to the oranges and the reds and the yellows mm. and the whites 
And uh, yeah, so that's really nice. Thank you, Aunt Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Sister You're the best. Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Toby. I'm pretty sure oh, Toby was Toby on the gift was, I'm sure it was his idea. I'm sure yeah. it was. Toby Jones, that's the favorite. He's our dog. little dog, and uh, <laughs> he's the best. He's precious. He's the best puppy ever. <laughs> <laughs> Except that he's not really a puppy. We just determined yeah, that he's he just, five years old. So that makes him 35 in dog years, doesn't it? <laughs> He'll always be our puppy. <laughs> They're supposed to have a long life, so we expect to have them around for quite a time. Yes, so. yes. So a third thing that's on my mind in terms of, what do we call this spiritual? Okay, you're number six now. This oh, is no, your third number uh, six. My third Final one total here. six. I seem to be having <laughs> issues with the number system today. That's okay. We're good. Oh, goodness. Anyhow, um, I've been really delving into the mystics lately because they fascinate me. With our ministry, we do a lot of research and studying, and of course, we come across lots of uh, information about the mystics. And, and we even have a program called The Mystic the in Mystic You, and in we you, will, which we are will be, be doing, doing soon. in May. And so, so yeah. just kind of refreshing my memory about um, some things, and then just continuing to learn as much as I can, because... You know, when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're rotten. And you should never, what that means is you right. never stop learning. You never stop learning. And, oh, goodness, there's so much out there to learn. And, and as it applies to the Catholic faith and some of the great mystics that have yeah. lived throughout the centuries and, and just so much profound wisdom that we can glean from them. Sure. So one of our favorites is St. Therese of Lisieux, and she was, I mean, she was very young when she passed away, 24, mm -hmm. and no one really thought that she was much of anything, mm -hmm. and here she was, this great powerhouse of spiritual virtue that was pretty much kept secret had yeah. it not been for her diaries, and of course her spiritual director who insisted that she write things down, we wouldn't mm -hmm. even know the things that we know. But I was just kind of looking over some notes about her, and one of the things she said was, I say very simply to God what I wish to say without composing beautiful sentences. And he always understands me. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, so many people think, well, I'll pray, I don't want to pray because I don't know how to use, I don't know what words to use and I don't know how God will feel about, you know, no, 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 no. We missed the boat, you know. Mm -hmm. Just just be with God. Just be with God. Just talk to him like you would anyone, mm -hmm. how you would your best friend, who mm -hmm. the people you feel most comfortable with, mm -hmm. because that's the kind of relationship he so wants you to have with him. Mm -hmm. And I love that she said it so perfectly mm -hmm. and so simply. Mm -hmm. I say and very be, simply. And to be real with him. Yeah. You know, Just, um, we have a friend who would always say like, you know, you don't need to filter with God because he already knows what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if you're worried about what God's, get over that. Just try to get over that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. She went on to say, for me, and this is something that I think is actually in the catechism. Um, mm -hmm. They I mean, use it right. as yeah, yeah. the opening message. This is how profound it is that it got included into the prayer section of the, of the Catholic catechism. But she said, for me, prayer is a surge of the heart. It is a simple look turned toward heaven. It is a cry of recognition and of love embracing both trial and joy. So I just, I love that yeah. surge of the heart. Yeah. Prayer is a surge of the heart. Mm -hmm. So when you're out, you know, taking a walk and you see something, a person or an animal or a plant or a flower, and it just kind of, and you have this moment of gratitude for, for such a precious gift, that's a surge of the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have a day where you're just feeling um, grateful just the attitude of being grateful is right. a surge of the heart. Yeah. So I encourage us to, I, I encourage you to delve into the mystics yourself. And I, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. So that's my number six. So six. these are six <laughs> things that have been stirring our souls. We want to know what's been stirring your souls. Let us know in the comments below. And if you've been so inspired by today's video, um, be sure to donate to our ministry at www.luminousministries.com slash donate. Have a blessed and beautiful day, everybody. Make sure that those surges of the heart, that you turn them toward God in prayer. Yes. Don't make it anything complicated. Just right. talk to God and have a great day.